So this video will um, introduce you to the uh, basics of um, vector analysis and I'm sorry for the um, um, you could say childish, childish writing on on the screen I have to get used to my stylus but um, anyway so what is a vector that's the first thing a vector is a quantity which has both a magnitude and a direction and we represent it by an arrow right, right there and the length of the arrow is the represents the magnitude the magnitude of the vector and the direction is well the direction so um of course the direction can be um measured by by an angle right by an angle or it or it could be implicitly mentioned by its components which we'll come to later now and then what's a scalar a scalar is a quantity which only has a magnitude now the examples of vectors would be acceleration you know, and force whereas um, examples of scalars would be um, mass mass these are scalars by the way scalars um, mass and then temperature temperature sorry for that and yeah so what is vector addition now vector addition is not like al the usual algebraic addition so let's say we have one vector here right let's call that v1 and the second vector we attach the you could say and remember we can translate a vector parallel to itself and still not change the value as long as it's a free vector so let's say we have another vector here that's v2 right now we can translate this vector in such a way that it still maintains its direction and magnitude so that would be v1 plus v2 right v2 is here v1 is here and then this line which joins the um the initial point of v1 and the final point of v2 right right here and right here uh is called v1 plus v2 it's so that is what we mean by v1 plus v2 right and now, uh, what? how do you subtract two vectors? Well, first of all, you have to define the negative of a vector. So if you have v1 right here, v1, and this is the di direction of v1, then minus v1 will have the same magnitude. It's going to have the same magnitude, but the opposite direction, right? The exact opposite direction. And we uh, carry out, um, so what you could say is if we have v1, v1 minus v2, it could be considered to be um, v1 plus minus v2, right? And then we carry on as usual. Now, um, yeah, so let let's have there's another interesting property of vectors like if you have three vectors which form a triangle and taken in order of course right these three vectors form a triangle you could say the resultant is zero right the resultant of three vectors the sum of three vectors form forming a triangle is zero and next is the parallelogram law of vectors. So what is the parallelogram law? Well, it states that, sorry, it's, it states that if you have two vectors, right, like this, then the resultant of these two vectors would be the diagonal of the parallelogram they form. So this, these two vectors, for example, if we extend the, this to form a parallelogram, remember these two are parallel to each other, and um, 
you, you kind of displace this vector right here, here, so then the resultant, as you can see, of these two vectors, v1 and v2, is going to lie along the diagonal, right there, right? And you can, by the class rule, you can, um, you know, get this magnitude, it's simply, uh, if we call this p, then the magnitude of p equals um, root v magnitude of v1 square plus magnitude of v2 square right plus um the root the root is continued uh, down here um plus 2 v1 v2 cos theta right sorry for the, the scribbly thingy but anyway, so that's how that's how it goes. Um, there's a whole root, by the way, the the roots on that as well. Okay, so now next thing is notation, right? Vectors may be sorry, oops, yeah, vectors may be um may be uh, represented by v one with a little arrowhead like that. Or just v1, it could be any letter, but I'm just taking. So v1 bold, like that. in some textbooks it's given a bold v1. And um, the magnitude of v1 can simply be represented by v1 or uh, magnitude of v1 arrowhead, like that. So these are the representation of magnitudes and these are the vectors themselves. Okay, now what are rectangular components? I'm sure you're familiar with the um, uh, 2D Cartesian plane, so we have a plane like that, right? And we have one vector like this. See? Now, before I go to the, uh, the, um, uh, I, uh, the um, a rectangular components, you have to know something about unit vectors. A unit vector is a vector which has a magnitude of 1, right? It can point in any direction, it just has a magnitude of 1. So in that, we take a special case of the x of the unit vector in the positive x direction, which we refer to as i cap, and the unit vector taken in the positive y direction, which is referred to as j cap, right? These, these two, uh, sorry for that. Um, just write that properly. j cap, right there. Yeah. So now, when we're describing a vector in the 2D Cartesian plane, we would like to express it as a scalar multiple of these two components, right? The i cap and the j cap. So how do we do that? Okay, let's say the terminus is at x2, y2, right? And the initial point is at, got to get a hang of this, x1, y1, right? Sorry, y1. Right. Now, if we wish to represent this, it would be x2 minus x1 times i cap, right? You're multiplying a scalar with a vector, that is i cap, um, plus y2 minus y1 j cap. Okay. Now, also, also note that we represent a unit vector in any direction with a little cap on it. Um, for example, if A is a vector, right, A cap would represent the unit vector in the same direction. Okay. Now, next is a little introduction to um, the 3D coordinate system. Right. Um, we're going to use the right-handed coordinate system, and I'll tell you why it's called right-handed in a minute. Um, 
okay so uh, this is the y axis this is the x axis and this is the z axis it's called right handed because if you take your hand and curl your fingers from the x axis to the y axis your thumb would be um, pointing in the positive z direction so that's why it's called right handed now next what we what we what we're going to discuss is the terminology associated with vectors right the terminology so the first thing is the co-initial vector i think the name itself is self-explanatory co-initial right these are vectors which have the same well initial point like this 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 you know all of these have a common point and therefore they will be called co-initial vectors okay now the next type is coplanar vectors again very self-explanatory what are coplanar vectors coplanar vectors are vectors in the same plane now note that any two vectors are always going to lie in the same plane. You can always translate one vector in such a way that it lies in the plane of the second vector. But now when we talk of three or more vectors, right, three or more vectors, we can, we can label them uh, as coplanar if they lie in the same plane. Now, we will delve into this a little later, like coplanarity. And then we have collinearity. Collinearity is simply the vectors which have the same direction, right? Collinearity, which are parallel to each other, basically, right? So, not I don't think it's same direction, but which are parallel to each other. So, these two vectors you could say are collinear right or um yeah so that's um collinearity and the null vector no the null vector is a vector with zero magnitude right a null vector has zero magnitude and it's not pointing it has an arbitrary direction right and it's usually represented by zero with a little arrow head on top okay and what about localized and free vectors? The localized vectors are vectors which cannot be um, displaced. For example, if you have a force acting on an object, right? this is a localized vector if you're talking about rotation and motion because it does matter where um, the force is acting, right? You can't displace this. Whereas free vectors are vectors that um, you can displace and not change the meaning in the context. So next is what is a sense? Uh, let's take a vector PQ, right? The sense of PQ is kind of the direction you could say of PQ. Right here, it's PQ. If you had QP, that would mean that would have the opposite sense, right? It would instead have a different direction. So there is a difference between PQ and QP. The next thing is the support. The support of a vector, the support of a vector is the, um, is the line, the infinitely dotted line right there, right? We extend the vector on both sides and then we can create a support of the vector, right? And next is the uh, reciprocal of the vector. Now, a vector, you know, the it the reciprocal of the vector has the same direction as the vector, but the magnitude, like if we have, um, if we call this v one and we call this v two, right? The magnitude of v one magnitude of v1 equals the reciprocal of the magnitude of v2. Okay, so now, uh, 
Um, next is multiplication of a vector by a scalar. So if you have a scalar m, right, and you have another vector v, so what you're doing, what you're basically doing when you're multiplying a vector by a scalar is multiplying its magnitude because its direction is not going to change, right? You can, like if this is v and m is positive and greater than 1, then your mv can look something like this, right? mv. It's going to have the same direction but um, a different magnitude. Now, um, position vectors, right? What are position vectors? Um, position vectors, first of all, we have to have our own coordinate system right there. That's the origin. And if we have a point P right here, the position vector from O to P, right? That, that right there is a position vector. And we can have, you know, the x, this x, y, and z, if we, if we consider another, another axis like that. So now the, now p position vector can be described as x i cap plus y j cap plus k, k, I'm, I'm sorry, z, one minute. Z K cap. And remember, um, K cap is the unit vector along the positive Z direction, right? That small unit vector there is K cap. Well, that's the end of um, introduction to vectors. If you have any suggestions, I'd gladly like to hear it. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Of course, I have to get used to the stylus. Um, yeah, so in the next topics, we will discuss, um, first of all, finding the magnitude of a vector and the scalar product, the, you know, the vector cross product, and, yeah, many, uh, and coplanarity and collinearity. So stay tuned for more.